Welcome to another edition of. But that's not important right now. But that's not important right now, and we have right now in our in our sites, Mixi Gubin, this yes. awesome animator, um, videographer, video guy. He does everything. He also worked with us at the agency. So the my agency. Name is, my name is Ian Reed. <laughs> And my and, name is Jared Butts. And Nick heard us talk last week about well, when you are like here. We record this on a Wednesday. So yes. last week would be the episode before this one um, with Randall. Nick heard yes. it is like, I want to be on the show. I want to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. yeah. you know? I, I think, it, um, I think so, it was more begging involved. It was me um, <laughs> pleading with Ian. Um, on uh, as, as long as groveling wasn't involved, you're, you're <laughs> yeah. okay. <laughs> so just to, just for our new new listeners and those returning, welcome back. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank um, you so much. We really are, appreciate it. We are about advertising. Yes. Uh, we are about the creative parts of advertising. We are about, well, I am a visual artist per se into digital marketing. Jared is the writer slash voice yeah. guy. Writer and voice, okay. voice over artist. Yeah. Oh, also, Jared, radio personality. So yeah. you got a fan on Facebook. I saw you got a fan. Um, a fan. Yeah, she oh, really? said, "Oh my God, I'm talking to John Brooks." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, you know, I always, I always chuckle when it comes to something like that because I'm not really that much of a celebrity. I don't see myself as I, that. I, I would beg to differ. I don't know yeah, if I ever told you I this, think Jared, you're but um, down. I think, I yeah. think you are one of the last. I wouldn't say of the old school because that's not true. I mean, but you yeah. are one of the the ones who have me maintained consistency within your appearance on radio and your appearance on radio theme things, so people recognize your voice. Well, not recognize yeah. your voice, but they know they know that they that that it's it's like I wouldn't say it's like the guy from um nine seven. What's his name? Um, Adrian Don Mora. Is it Adrian Don yeah. who's on 97? I mean that no, man, no. that that man that man is literally glued to the chair in, in, in 97, right? <laughs> you're not like that. You you are you are like, oh, it's that guy. You're that guy. <laughs> like um, I, I don't know if I ever told Jared this, but um when yes. I started working at the agency, I was a huge fan of Jared because I grew up listening to 95.1. Oh my god. And um I was starstruck. Like the first thing I did when I got home was um I told my brother about it. I was like, you wouldn't believe who I'm working with. Um, yeah, it was it was amazing actually meeting him. Um, it far exceeded my impressions of him on radio. He's such an awesome guy. Oh shucks. Oh god. No, 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 no. 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 Oh, it's too much soccer and soccer. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm about to lapse into a diabetic coma. Thank you so much. And we start doing like what our our general manager used to say. Our general manager is famous for just saying the most um awkward things at the most inopportune times. And he's a character <laughs> that we, well, we can help himself. We want to flesh him himself. We want to flesh him out into a character because one of the things that we want to do with this podcast is we want to try to convert it into 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 stories that we could write about and John nice. and I have this idea that we want to we want to write about these things as well so it's not just doing this podcast we have we have plans but so this character and he's he's a wonderful guy we love him he's awesome yes he's like he let's let's not just sit down here and compare dicks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm like in a, in a room full of women. Uh, uh, yeah, guys. Um, and that was yeah, and that wasn't exactly. I mean, it, I, I just thought when I looked at him, I thought, don't you just have the distinct taste of a foot in your mouth? I mean, really? What? what no, well, he what also. I don't. Mick. Mick doesn't. Re, I also asked Randall, but Randall doesn't. Yeah. Know. Mick, you don't remember David Aldred? I don't think you no. would. David Aldred was there. Um, David Aldred is also a writer. He's, he was an English guy, so he was just mm -hmm. on the same level as our as our general manager. And yeah. David is listening. David, we love you. You're awesome. David is is um is living in England with his wife and all his kids. And um, David Aldred and and the general manager, I remember having a discussion about soggy biscuits. <laughs> and, and <laughs> 
I am not going to tell you what that is. You need to go and Google it. <laughs> yeah. I am not, I'm not, I'm, I, I was, I, I, my ears, they were bleeding. My ears were bleeding. And, uh, anyway, but, but that's not important right now. No, no, that's not important right now, Ian. Yeah, yeah. we are talking to Mick about, yes. <laughs> we, we are talking to Mick about leading off on our, pre, our previous episode with um, Tony Mo- Timmy Mora. Yeah, who was talking about advertising. We didn't really get into a chance. We got into a lot of stuff, which was really cool. Go and listen to it mm-hmm. with, with Timmy. But one of the things that we didn't discuss with Timmy was some of the ads that we wanted to discuss because of, you know, the, so it was so interesting. But and Timmy, Timmy is, right. is the videographer, right? Timmy owns um, visual art and communications. Visual and art right, production. right. I think, right? I, yeah. And he and, has brothers involved too as well, right? Right. I'm not too sure, but what is happening is is that he's yeah. taking it upon himself single-handedly excuse me, to archive nice. all yeah. the, the footage that was stored on tape that were, tried, were thrown away or, or he could salvage or find. It's like archaeology. And um, it, it, it's an, an amazing project. And I'm, I wish him, we wish, we, we, we're also asking people if they'd be willing to come out and help. Well, that's one of the other things. But that sparked one of the things that I want to talk to Mick about is the evolution of animation. Because on the, on the evolution of not just animation, but visual effects in, 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 in advertising and Trinidad. Because we started the conversation before we started the show about a kiss snack ad yeah when snacks come out, start out now for those of you who don't know what a hell what the hell a kiss snack is god could you define what a kiss snack is a kiss snack well okay in order for me to 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 tell you that would involve going back way back in time so kiss originated as a snack cake back in 1978 which is a long time ago, <laughs> and a long time. I, rem- I remember. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's on. that's far beyond my time. Oh my well, yeah, that's far be- yeah, exactly. That's when that's when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Anyway, <laughs> but the, but the thing about it is, uh, the Kiss snack cake back in 1978, your your humble Kiss snack cake consisted of two flavors, orange and chocolate. In fact, they were inspired by uh, the Hostess Twinkies from. Mm the states and they said well no why can't we have something you know local so they did so they had uh the kiss snack cake which was orange and chocolate with a creamy filling and then it just graduated and then there were other uh, derivatives of, the, of that particular kiss brand and it's become this this huge mega brand in trinidad and tobago where not only do you have kiss snack cakes you have uh particular types of breads whether it's whole wheat white bread that kind of thing Yes, so they're they no bought kiss, kiss all of the other bakeries. They, they became a conglomerate. They bought all the bakeries. They so did. They, they bought. They bought out Quelo. Most of Quelo, mm-hmm. they bought yeah. out back in the nineteen eighties. So and yeah, they, they merged with Bermudez. They're part of the same group of companies. They are. Really? They, they they merged. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah they, they, they they did. They did. Um, mm-hmm. So that was how Kiss originated as as a snack cake, and back then a Kiss snack cake could set you back by like about what. 40 cents. I kid you not. So, yeah. What is it that, now? What, what is it now? It's $3? Now, <laughs> I think it's now $3. Yeah. It's so, what is What is happening? When they launched Kiss Snack Cakes, yes. it was an ad that I remember, and I was probably about 40 times, maybe five, yeah. of an animated factory in the style uh-huh. of almost in the style of a Tex Avery cartoon. I mean, it, right. looked, it yeah. looked like something that came out from Looney Tunes. And it, it was just dancing, you know, or oh, Disney, even even a Disney ad, you know, and a Disney right. animated yeah. story. And th- these cakes are dancing and being filled by cream because that's the, that's the southern thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It was. So, it was. Sounds it appropriate. Was being filled from the top of the head and not from the other side. <laughs> so. Yeah, that because you know, that would have been really old. Yep. <laughs> I was. I was. It was. It was always amazing to me because it it resonated with me because I was a kid and that's what it was supposed yeah. to. Yeah. And years yeah. later, when I started at the agency, because they had the client, I said, "Who did this ad?" 
And Suzanne, who's the producer at the time, Suzanne said, oh, yeah, that ad, that was done in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. And that was the end of the ad. There was no, there was no yeah. further, you know, well, well, who in Venezuela? <laughs> who, was in, who, who wrote this? Who came up with this? Who came up with the song? Who came up with the jingle? Yeah. Nah, I don't know anything. Nobody knew anything. Uh, and I never followed up on it. So anybody who was working with me at the agency, Suzanne, if you could remember who did it in Venezuela, <laughs> that would be great because we are coming off of, of the conversations with Timmy. A lot of the ads came from Latin America that we had to read up. But this ad, I think the agency commissioned an animation studio, which existed in Caracas, to do the yes. ad for us. Yes. And it was produced yeah. for us. And I think... I think that's a major milestone. Yeah. And to me, if you're listening to this episode, I'll get in touch with you. If you could find that ad, along with the other ads that we've told you to find, um, <laughs> that would be awesome because um, I, I I only remember the dancing part. I mean, there were other parts involved. I remember going to Brett Lewis um, and asking Brett Lewis, who was at the time at Ice Cream Animation, I said, Brett, did, do you know who did this? And he had no clue. And he's like, I want to know too, because it influenced, it influenced a lot of us. I mean, yeah. it influenced me in a little bit of a way, but, it, but Mick, now, now we're going to turn it over to you. I mean, what, what's your story for getting into the, to the agency? How did you end up working for the agency? The same way I got into this conversation, a lot of begging and pleading, that surely helps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but on a serious note, um, I think it's a lot of um a lot of it is hard work um and being lucky <laughs> on mm. um just having a positive attitude towards your work mm. um those are the three things i think um kind of helped me get into the agency and truly the, the good graces of the um people that were there um that surely helped where did you come from before before well, working with before, us where were you before before this, like, I started my career off working in, um, like, sign shops, like, doing a graphic design. I was a graphic designer before. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing motion design. Um, after those those jobs, I got employed at Balgrove's Funeral Home, which was amazing. Wow. Um, doing graphic <laughs> that's, design. That's something. Um, yeah. It was, it was a good experience. Right after that, I went to Unicomo, where um, I... That was my first motion design job. On um, right off to there, I went to the agency. Um, I stayed there for about five years, and then um, I left, and I migrated to Canada, where um, I worked at Patterson Outdoor, and then I worked at Mercury. I actually worked on Kid Cosmic, the um, Netflix animated series. Wow, and, um, that's cool, man! After that, I, um, I ended up at Game Loft where I currently am, and I work on like games like Legos, um, Legacy, and Disney Magic Kingdom. So yeah, that's pretty much the size of it. That's awesome, Mick. I that was, is awesome. That is really I would, awesome. I would say that um, I think we had a conversation while I was at a, another company. Yeah. We, we were try, I was trying to see if I could get you because I needed somebody like you. I needed somebody like you. I needed somebody to come and help these people because there were just a lot of, lot of young guys and young girls, just, you know, raw talent. You know, you start yeah. out, that's how you, you start out with raw talent. And then the fires of hell <laughs> working in the agency <laughs> kind of hone your skills into move, not just moving faster, but, yeah. but, but, but thinking on the fly. And coming up with things, not just out of the box, but that's also important. But, you know, saying there's a better way to do this. And I could do this. And I could do it this way. And I always remember, Mick, you've always been, you know, that kind of guy to just sit down. Mick was always very hyper-focused. <laughs> I, I remember when you, were, when, you were, you, when you were in the side agency, sitting down with us for a little bit. <laughs> and I was like, you know, Mick is just like out of sorts because he has to sit here because that's where his workstation is. And these all these other people around him and he's like, I don't know if Mick is going to kill somebody. Uh, so it's, just, <laughs> it, it's just the illusion of, of being focused, I guess. Um, 
the the cool thing about being in, in that situation at the agency was um I had to wear many hats mm. because I was the only animator there. Um, so there was a lot of things to do, even like videography. I have to um, shoot stuff, edit things. Mm. Um, so like I was always on the move, and like as as Ian rightfully said, it kind of um, it kind of builds up your, your skills. It mm. helps you kind of perfect what you already started doing so by te- like when i got in there i was um an okay animator and motion designer and by the time i left i was a moderately good one <laughs> so um, <laughs> it, it did help kind of um, and what helped too as well is the amazing talent that that we were afforded to work with like i think everybody there was so talented and it just kind of rubbed off like they like but jared too as well like just looking at how he develops his, his scripts and he writes kind of helped me to as well develop how my storytelling abilities and how I construct a story. Yeah. Um, and you too as well, Ian, like just talking to you, I work sometimes talking about design, um, good graphic design, good programs, what to do and stuff. That kind of helped. Yeah. Um, Mick, I had asked this question to Randall in the last episode. Maybe it's between to you. Yeah. Was there a project that you remember that you enjoyed working on at the agency that 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 you think is worth you know relating? Is there some some project that you thought? Yeah, I mean, you don't need to name. It would be difficult to not name the client. You could name the client if you wanted to, <laughs> but uh, is there one that stands out? It doesn't even have to be award winning. Is there something that stands out for you that made you feel that you know even? Even if if the creative director had, had peed all over it, it's still something <laughs> you thought was you know it wasn't produced or it was produced, but you thought you know damn, uh, yeah that's that's good shit, man. <laughs> Actually, it was probably the first project <clears throat> I worked on over there. Um, it was something for B Mobile. Mm. Um, it was a stupid animation. I thought it was cool, and um, I kind of got, actually got full support of the um creative director he was really helpful in that situation mm-hmm. um and he kind of pushed it forward and it, it kind of won um i think a silver award or something mm-hmm. but um it was just an opportunity to to do what I, I like to do like my style of animation and just um get it done mm-hmm. um also they were also contributors like miguel um he helped out on it too as well or oh, dumb I wasn't supposed to call names but He's such a cool, good guy. I can help myself. Yeah, so it was him and I that worked on it. And um, yeah, that was super fun. Um, just being able to just do what you love to do and just be creative. Um, I didn't you really have much. Was? Can you describe it? It was um, it was a Valentine's Day piece, mm-hmm. and it was um, it was just about love. Um. <laughs> And this this stupid character just trying to um, show this other character um, to get to get their attention. Um, it's it's a kind of riff on dumb ways to die. Um, mm. So he would always run into problems. Like he would buy flowers, and bees would come up the the flowers and sting him in his eyes. It's kind of graphic too as well. But um, it was tremendously funny, and um, it was crazy that we got it got um greenlit. And it actually ran. So um, that was super fun. I wonder if we could get that ad, boy. You're talking about archiving these ads. That's, that, ad yeah. is, that is not an ad that is 20 years ago. That's recent. Um, That's five years ago. Right. About, about, about six? About five years ago, was it? Yeah, about five six, six years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, okay. I, yeah, yeah, six years ago. I, I we we'll have to we have to find out. I think I'm gonna have to start making back contacts with people in the yeah. agency. Because I'm pushed on on Grata. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, well, I think we, I'm well, pretty you, sure. you, you might not be, but anyway, yeah. Well, someone <laughs> needs to go there and probably just kind of save at least some of the ads in the last 10 years. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think it's a, it's a two man job one distract and one um, <laughs> store in the archives. And um, I think it will work well, better. That the archives are entrapments, <laughs> stories. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the problem with you, know, you can't just go unless you walk into Chapman's and say, "Well, maybe you could if you're ballsy enough." Say, hey, "I'm from a can I gave, but there's a process. Yeah. So you know, there's always bureaucracy with these things. But I mean, we could figure something out. 
Yeah, I'm sure it's, it's, it's still living somewhere online. I could probably look and see if I get it. Sadly to say, I didn't really save anything much from that um that time over there. It's, it's very oh, it's very difficult, especially now with the with what's going on. You know, it's things are all over the place and things are yeah. lost in the cracks as people are focusing now on the now and what's going to happen in the future rather than the past because they they they're a little bit. It's because of the nature of what's going on. So we, we won't get into that. But um, I I don't remember working on a project with you, though. Um, I can't re- recall. I, I think we worked on RBC. To, I worked on everything, to be honest. I was just, right. I, I don't think I was um, fully involved in it, but like every single project, because I was the only anime. Were you involved so. in Meet the Boroughs? Yes, I was involved in that too as well. Oh, yes. I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John, yeah, that you, was... you remembered me the boroughs. Remind yes. me what exactly was that that campaign about? Oh gosh, now you're asking me to explore the nethermost regions of the windmills of my mind. John, we you are have talking... a big head. You probably have enough space in there to carry all of this. <laughs> yeah, that that's true, but still. Uh, meet the Burrows. It was um, supposed to be this family, the Burrows. They, yeah, um, some, something about accessing a loan with a particular bank, which will remain nameless. And the, uh, the, it also dealt with the ways and means and how you could access those particular loans once you were aligned or, or chose this particular bank. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, they had every particular loan to suit your need whether you were going to university, whether you wanted to uh, renovate your home, get a car, go on vacation, that kind of stuff. Mm. And um, it was, I mean, talk about a a, a nuclear family. Um, Instead of having, instead of having your, your standardized pet, whether that was supposed to be a dog or a cat, in some cases, they ended up with an iguana. It was that kind of a, it was that kind of a quirky sort of, Sort of concept that 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 that, that had originated back then, and um, yeah, it wasn't our concept. Was, we we didn't we didn't. I don't come think it was. Here. It wasn't so much our concept. We we're supposed to to how, how to put not to put too far. Adaptation, point, but, but it was we, an adaptation. We, we, That's we it. We made it. We made, it. we made it better. We, we made it better. Well, so, yeah, that was that was the main thing to I make mean, it better. Another thing was 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 a kind of our spin. On the concept, it's okay. So I, I likened it to Dear John. Dear John, the TV series in England was ah, very, yes, very funny. And then very we had funny. the American version, which is also very funny. And the only thing that separates them is the fact that the actors are one is the Americans and it's British. And yeah, you have the Americans and it's British. Yeah. So I mean, the, the thing is, is that um, Meet the Burrows was. I'm trying to remember if there was a if. Um, there was a video. We had yeah, was it, there, was a, there was a TVC for, for that, I believe. You know, what uh, wasn't I, there? Yeah, but we, we there, there probably was, as, as I recall. I, I can't. It's been so long since since yeah. since we 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 really touched on that. But I do remember the campaign itself. But uh, to say that there was a TV version, there probably was. There probably I'm, was. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but like it was it was interesting how they um. They crafted that communication where they um kind of puts like several um with the family and stuff. First of all, the family looked um pretty interesting. <laughs> like this being jumping into the agency and yes. just looking at the um the posters and the the material. Um yeah, it was definitely a sitcom type family. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but it, it was a, a tool just to sell loans i guess so, just to sell loans just yeah. to sell particular oh. loans and 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 that was what meet the borrows is all about yeah yeah it was fun though yeah. it was a whole heap of fun yeah yeah of course because it's, it's projects like that that make working in advertising i mean you're not you're not working in advertising anymore so i'm pretty sure but is, was it a culture shock or it was how does it feel moving from 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 trying to sell Crap. <laughs> to quote, <laughs> to quote J. Jonah Jameson, crap, crap. So crap. crap. Uh, to, um, to, <laughs> to doing what I think is ex- extremely very creative stuff. I mean, what you're working yeah. on now is, is on the other, is, is totally on the other side, you know? Well, t- to be honest and stuff, um, 
the advertising life wasn't that bad. It was, it was a lot of fun. It always kept you busy. And like, again, the, um, it was good, but just working on new stuff. Um, okay. It has a, okay. Let me start from the beginning. Yeah. Um, so the entertainment side of it, um, working at Mercury was super fun. Like I, I've always loved animated features, features and TV shows and just getting the ability to do that mm-hmm. was super fun. But um, sometimes you just don't want to see how the cookie is made. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, it's two different things. My time there was was pretty good. I learned a lot, but I think I'd rather watch animated stuff than make it. Um, yeah. Um, what was so, your responsibility yeah. on the Netflix series? What 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 did you work on specifically? Well, when I started, I worked on Kid Cosmic as a compositor. So that what, what we had to do was put effects on stuff. So like when you see, um, and like rims on, on characters and um, just make it look pretty, pretty, mm-hmm. pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at, at Game Off, um, I'm a 3D generalist. But the the big difference is, it's the same work, to be honest. It's just new, new stuff. Yeah. More fun. Yeah. Just fun stuff. Yeah. Fun stuff. Yeah. So to coming back to the agency, I yeah. was the same person I asked Randall, what, what in your mind was the, probably well, we the lowest point. Um, what was the lowest point? I think when I left, <laughs> it was, it was a kind of bittersweet thing. Cause I wasn't sure like, um, what would happen. That's kind of conflicted. Um, because my wife and I, we we knew we were migrating and stuff. It was just a matter of time. But um, you just invest so much years in the agency, and um, you, it was a kind of bittersweet thing. You just really wanted to to see how far you would you would get, how how, how far you could push the envelope. Um, so I think that was the lowest point. Just um, realizing you know what, well, well, I have other things I want to do and. This mm-hmm. is just a chapter I just have to close and just this um just move on. Mm-hmm. Because in honesty, like in all, all things you do, there are challenges, but I don't really like to look at them as, as low points or bitter points. It's, it's just yeah. um things to grow from, things to learn yeah. from. Yeah, yeah. Got it. I got it. That's true. I can't argue with you on that score. Can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's all it's all it's all transitory. Um, Coming back to the state of the industry right now, uh, when it comes to not just animation, but overall the, the discussion that is that's threaded through a lot of our podcast episodes is the perception that what we do, not that it doesn't have any value, but the value is low. Um, so I think one of the discussions I was having with a friend of mine who is also getting into, he's now getting into motion graphics. He's a really great um, uh, graphic artist and he's now moving into motion graphics and he, he's really, really hungry. But the problem is, is that nobody wants to pay him what he feels is his worth. And the question always comes up and we had this discussion with Randall last yeah. week. Um, what the Randall's thing as a writer is what what is my worth as a writer? What do you think is the state of the industry when it comes now to to doing um, any sort of motion graphics? What what's the situation right now? I think culturally in the Caribbean, I don't want to say something, with <laughs> but um, <laughs> so um, <laughs> okay, just on the market. You all do beeps, right? <laughs> I will have to do this one, yes. Okay, good, good, good. I'll, yeah, sorry, apologies. That's right. Um, no, it's okay. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're among friends. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> culturally, I think um, we don't really, like the arts, we don't put focus on it um, or, or correct value on it. Mm-hmm. So you, you would find right. like a friend or something be like, hey, Jared, just do a, vo- a voiceover for me. Um, yeah. And they don't expect to, to pay for things like that. They don't expect mm-hmm. um, it costing money because get there's no value attached to it. Get that a lot. They get that. Mm-hmm. I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Whenever, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to steal your thunder, man. No, 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 go ahead. When, whenever, when we, when I started, 
um, voiceover work a long time ago. Uh, when I, I, I said, look, you should pay me what I am worth because this is not something that I just got up one morning and said, I'm going to do voices. Yeah. It, it, it requires a lot of, a lot of discipline, a lot of self-control mm-hmm. and there's a lot of training involved as well. There's a lot of, there's a lot of training. There's a lot of, there's a lot of training involved. There's a lot of training involved. And sometimes, and sometimes, and you see, it, it's all well and good to have to have the gift and, and to have the talent. Once you have the talent, that's fine. Yeah. But if I have the talent, I also have to put in the hard work and the training as well in yeah. order to sound even better. And that require and that of course with my expertise and all that. Yeah, you got to pay me the big bucks. If you can't pay me that, well then forget it. I'm not okay. doing it. It's it's that simple. And that and we do not place a premium. We do not place a premium in voice talent. We sure as heck don't place any kind of premium when it comes to animation. And that's sad because yeah. we have a lot of brilliant animators in Trinidad and yeah. Tobago. We have a lot of, of 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 fantastic animators throughout the Caribbean, throughout the region. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. and the only way and the only way they can they as animators and we as voice actors can ever get any kind of 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 valid solid recognition is if we decided look let's get the hell out of this pond because it's not it's not serving us in in any particular way yeah yeah but that's that's another discussion friend of it yeah I think the larger overall discussion is exactly what you said um, it's 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 are not understanding the value. Um, but I, I, I think it's, a, it's anything a tr- art art related. You see, yeah. Um, we've we've been, we we unfortunately have grown up in a in a kind of situation, and it's I don't think it's a un, I don't think it's unique to us. I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of people in in various territories who suffer the same problem. Yep. So it's not unique to us. But I think. I think the, 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 the minute I started reading an ad age or around 2006, seven, that agencies were now looking to cut corners and cut costs. And this is, I know it was actually about 2008 after the crash, the, the financial crash. It, it started to give me a little bit of worries because when is it going to stop you cutting things? So like, okay, so they come and they say, Look, we want to run. We we want to we want to create content. Like I had this example two two weeks ago. We we want to run content for our brand. Um, I want I want fifteen um, vox pops that I want to publish on my um, Facebook page, testimonial wise. And um, yeah, it needs to be 60 seconds long. It needs to be edited. It needs to be voiced. Blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm like, all right, cool. What's, what's your budget? Well, I don't have a budget. You have to give me five. I said, all right, well, that, that could cost upwards of between 25 and 35. What? Are you insane? I could get it done for $500. I'm like, 15 videos, 60 second long interviews with real people yeah. in a studio. I'm like, seriously? They're like, yeah, well, we have to because that's the budget. I'm like, so it's it's a very difficult thing. And but you see, there are guys out there who will do it. Or I'm seeing, yeah, this yeah guy that, is, that is the other thing too as well. You know, it it's no value mm. for their services. You know, they're like, well, I could do I could do an animated 30 second spot for you for two hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. right. they're comfortable with that. They're yeah. very comfortable with that. And that's 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 but, but and that's tragedy. Coming, right back to, coming back to the talent aspect of working at the agency, this yeah. is one of the things that the agency try pushing. Is that we have the top talent, and yeah. yes, that is true. But as I I had an argument with the creative director, you know, he, he and I used to have arguments all the time. I said Sweet that. Guy. Yeah, into that. No, <laughs> seriously. Like, yeah. I said that doesn't that that doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. It's like, of course it matters. I said, it doesn't matter anymore. They want the talent. They're just yeah. not willing to pay for it. You see? That's true. I, but, but going back to, to what we was, were saying, like, well, I just wanted to interject that um, I think it's, it's a twofold thing. Um, Just how you approach 
clients and our clients um educating clients too as well because mm. sometimes somebody would come in and be like okay fine we need um 10 ads and we need them at this price yeah. and then it falls up on to, to you to either tell them you know two things like um tell them something not nice <laughs> or just <laughs> um educate them say you know what what you're paying for is x and y and z mm-hmm. and this is how this is going to add value to your business and this is why we charge this amount because sometimes people just generally don't know and i think a big part of being a creative is explaining that to them yeah. um just helping them understand and hopefully that will transmit to other people too as well and i always feel like the reason why people ask those things is because they just don't know um that's true it's yeah true. and but, just but, uh, explain yeah. it to people sometimes is really helpful in the old days it was a fight to get the idea approved yeah. so you would go and you would fight and fight and fight and, the, and eventually the client might might cut it up and make a frankenstein's monster out of it but you you ended up producing something yeah no oh, that's the next thing too as well just um fact mitigating clients and finding that balance is so mind-numbingly difficult fun. Yeah. But the thing is, is, is that now they just added on the, the extra challenge now of, mm-hmm. well, it's not the idea per se. I don't really care about the idea. I just want to know how much it will cost to do. So the conversation always starts nowadays, at least for me. And I, I, people could come and comment. Uh, if you listen to us on YouTube, when this comes out on YouTube, please do comment and let me know if this is a different situation for you working in the industry, if you are, that price comes first. Okay, so what can I get for $25,000? You know, I'm like, all right, um, but we need to discuss the concept and the idea. No, 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 no I, it does, that doesn't matter. And <laughs> I don't know... I'm not out of the industry now, but I yeah. don't know if that is still a big deal. I don't know if our former creative director still goes into a meeting and presents this way out of the box idea. And the first thing the client asks is, well, how much is it going to cost? You know, I don't know. I, I, I got that kind of feeling when, when I was leaving the industry, that that's the trend that was following, that it was how much is it going to cost me to do this? And then I will approve the idea based on the cost, you know? Yeah. And even like in, in those situations, I mean, I'm not speaking from the agency point of view, but after the agency, I had some experience doing this freelance and having to deal with clients. And um, the first thing, like in, in that situation, that is the big question is like the cost. That is the overarching thing. And um, I think being a, a creative and knowing how much time how long it takes and what is really involved kind of helps doing that but this mm-hmm. being somebody who, who's not involved in um that aspect of things and trying to figure out a price is is rough is is kind of yeah. tough to really nail it down yeah. um just looking at something you know you could like if they say they want 25 designs you could estimate for more like a, a if they give you a reference okay this this probably is going to take x amount of time yeah um yeah so that that is always um and even though like sometimes the you call a price sometimes it doesn't um add up like sometimes yeah. you go over but you have to commit to, to that course so you know yeah. Um, yeah 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 i i had a discussion with a client i mean i ended up doing the job but they're mm-hmm. like oh, you know we are, this is our budget and this is what we want. And I kind of I kind of came back to them and said, you can't get everything. I could give yeah. you 60%. And they were like, okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You know, I said for that price, I and mean, then we worked it out. You know, they were they were very accommodating, but they were upset because they they again I don't know. I I have seen so many resources out there. There's so many things out there teaching people how to do graphic design and how to do yeah. this and, and how to do this and how to do that. And I still don't understand why a client would still be very confused as to what something would cost. Because if you tell them, look, a logo for me, it starts at 3,500. They, 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 they look at me in shock. 
They're like, well, I could get 10,000 <laughs> logos for that. Why, why are you charging me this amount? They said, because you're charging for my time. You're charging for my yeah. experience. You're charging. And they're like, well, now nah, I'm going to find a man who could do it for me for 200. I'm like, all right, cool. And I wrote a blog about that on my website. And it got a lot of traction in the community because mm -hmm. people were like, yes, this is like nailing the, the proclamation to the door. You correct. Do not accept you know, don't and and you know what hurt me most about that to reiterate, it was that it was a former client of ours who had a very good relationship with when we were at the agency and who was yeah. I think very professional. And he turns around and said, nah, nah, I, I can't afford you. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I just it's very sad, you know. it wasn't yeah. uh, there was no animosity involved, and I understood his situation. But you go up front and you come up up front and say, look, man, all I have is $100. What you could do for me for $100? I'll tell you, okay, this is what I could do for $100. But I'll probably tell you, no, nah, I can't take that job for $100. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a time, it's what, it's what you want to do with your life. Yeah. You but then again, like, uh, like, let's look at podcast, well, listen to the podcast, sorry. Like, I think it was the future. I was, um. Mm -hmm. You were talking about something like that, right? Where when when you charge for a logo, it's really how much the the, the company or the individual, it, how much value it is to them. So like a logo for a, a multinational company might be $50,000, but for like a small business, it might be a $500. So the, that aspect of pricing, it, it, it kind of fluctuates. Um, this is just a school of thought. It, it is not like how people should price. I feel like people should price according to them and like how they value their product. Yeah. But um, how they depicted they, they their value system was valuing assets based on the company that they're working for. Yeah. Yeah. So probably yeah. that that $100 is how much he feels his, his business, um, how, how much it values to him. Yeah, I mean, if you go and read it, I kind of go into a little more detail on the blog. But yeah, the future, the, I watch the future blog, the um, stuff on, on and um, I'm like, they, I, I love what they're saying. Yeah. But it's it's getting more and more difficult, I, I think, said, because yeah. of what's going on. And it's nobody's fault. This mm -hmm. is just the reality. The real, and there are other things as well. We have We have AI now. I was reading the other day where AI is now doing artwork, you know, is building artwork. Canva is coming out with its 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 yeah its stuff, which is auto generating things. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know, I was having a discussion with um with with one of my business partners. Well, he's not really a business partner, but we do work together. Dwayne Buddha Singh from Trinity Tuna. Dwayne Trinitytuna.com, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um ah. Dwayne, Dwayne does a lot of digital advertising. And he yeah. says, he says, all my, all the clients that had come to me to do the ads are now going to ban a snack or one of these people and just generating things in five seconds and just sending it to me to do. So people like me, like the graphic artists could build the ads for doing, I can't do that anymore. Banner snack is doing it. So I, I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to find now another red ocean to jump out of. I have to find something <laughs> else to jump into, you know? So it's, well, that's, it's, that's the thing about our field too like as well. That. Like that, that's the thing about our field. Like it's constantly changing. Like you have to really adapt. Like, cause when I now started, if, if I continue the trajectory as a graphic designer feel, um, I wouldn't have much avenues to, to go into. So like, yeah. even now, like agencies, they, they don't hire like a flat, designer they want to know that you could do motion design you want to you could do web design they want a, a multifaceted artist to handle their project projects so i mean it's just finding new niches like right now i feel like playable games is a um, playable ad sorry is the yeah. big on top market um like things things pop up you just constantly have to roll with it and figure out what, what is um what is going to bring more value to you and your um company or business yeah but yeah. don't you think that don't you think that at the end of the day if you say that you wanted something that would when you look at it when you look at the end product whatever it is whether it's not or whatever and you, and you say to yourself yes you you got it at a fraction of the cost but then again then again 
was it was it of any was it of any value did it did it did it was it worth it in the end yeah. really because yeah. you look at it and you say to yourself well you know you didn't invest that much time and you didn't invest that much effort into it again at a fraction of the cost so i guess you did the job yeah but at the, but then then you have to ask yourself what why why i mean what, where's the why in all of this yeah, yeah. is it from where's the, the creative standpoint like something you create and you didn't spend much time in it with it yeah yeah, yeah. not only that i mean you, you you're doing it yes but um people are concerned about time constraints or concerned about cost and and yeah. and, and you're not really any i i i don't think maybe this is just the the old school me talking but i would not be able to live with myself if i could say well i'm going to do i'm just going to stop caring about um you know the my integrity as an artist and just and just do this and and, and you know i i just want to take the money and run yeah. i just want to no, take the no, money but and but run at the same time jared like if you spend two yeah. minutes doing something now is because you invested a lot of time in yourself before this prior to this yeah. that that got brought it. you to that got place no, right you're right so when, so if i spend like an hour doing a piece even though it took me a short amount of time i still charge my my rates because it isn't because um it was easy it yeah. was because i invested a lot of sleepless nights um learning new things to help so there you have and, uh, it yeah. yeah there it is yeah there it is right there yeah so i want people to li- who are listening you know especially the young guys you know there are a lot of young guys who are listening you know a lot of a lot of upstart graphic designers um it is not an easy road don't think it's an easy road don't think or oh, i i have serious issues with these ads that keep popping up learn <clears throat> graphic design in 20 in 20 hours you know i beg to differ ian think about it as an easy road and try to have fun with it and yeah. try to keep a positive mentality and always push yourself yeah. forward <laughs> as the best way i mean like i think the mindset is the most important part of what we do and like the second we um let it kind of ruin the experience for us is when we get burnt out but yeah. is that constantly just motivating yourself and motivating people around you will will kind of push you through the end yeah all right um <laughs> good talk I, i i i think we got very heavy this is this has gotten very yeah. heavy and very philosophical mm-hmm. but um i i i i think that there is it's an it's an exciting field to be in motion graphics especially i have dabbled in 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 motion graphics because i wanted to learn some of it i i played around with blender i played around with after effects and i play i played around with premiere actually you do i i i learned a lesson hard nick with this podcast when i yeah. thought i could just render uh, a waveform in after effects with some fancy um nope special effects graphics for the um this the whole podcast not just the i could i could do the little trailers and mm. the little 30 seconds and one minute things that's cool you know when i try to render the one hour podcast to put on youtube it took yeah. me eight hours and i was looking at this thing and going <laughs> and now i do something wrong here i must have done something wrong but it it yeah. taught me something it taught me that i don't have that kind of skill yet to 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 do that level of work and you know i said look if i was really serious about this and if i was making money off of this podcast send money if i was making money off of this podcast send money please god send money send money <laughs> send money i would i would i, I would I for god's sake like Nick or somebody like my friend um to 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 just say look here's the here's the audio here's what i want to do uh just render it for me and i would pay for it no problem you know and that's an investment that i know what i'm really getting from you know i'm fearless so no. just just editing audio is so hard like um this morning i was doing some of that even last night um in audition and it's like a one hour length um conversation and i just got up to six minutes spent an hour just editing yeah. um it's not for the faint of heart like if somebody said hey mick we have a job for you to edit um some youtube videos that would be a hard no <laughs> that's a lot of work <laughs> yeah. um i don't know how you how do you do like do you um chop it up in after effects and um bring it here or do you use audition or something uh i started using audacity 
yeah um, cuz it's free but mm -hmm. then i realized i'm not i'm not getting the sound if uh, i was not get, it was not easy to manage the the levels and yeah. so what i did was i got a i i, I got a, i got audition and i put that on and i didn't know anything about audition and, oh, it's a dream but come I, true. I did i did do i did do a course I did a course in Pro Tools with yeah. um, uh, Mr. Rommel. Um, Jai, do you remember? You know Rommel's first full name? He had the Star Studios. Do you remember his full yes, name? Yes, Rommel Best. Yes, Rommel. Great guy. Um, but yes. but, but yeah. Jared, don't you do... The, um, see, okay, I don't want to be too presumptuous, but like mm -hmm. um, just being in the, in the radio industry and stuff, you, you must have yeah. some kind of um, some audio editing skills locked up somewhere there, right? <laughs> Well, no, the reality of the situation is not, yeah. not exactly. I don't. I mean, my forte was just um, in broadcasting. Okay. If you were to ask me in terms of editing, uh, when I worked as a reporter, believe it or not, at one of the um, talk radio stations, one of the prerequisites was that, yes, we did have to in, uh, get involved in, in, in editing sound. And that, for me was a bit of a breeze because um i was taught then and there how to successfully edit particular sound bites and, and clips and, and and what have you so mm -hmm. that wasn't too that wasn't too difficult that was that was a breeze that i enjoyed yeah um so yeah i mean there, there, there's you see the thing about it is once you're in radio and 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 I, I can only speak for myself i can't speak for others once i was in radio i wanted to know as much as I could about every particular aspect of it, not just, of course, stepping in front of the microphone, but also um, to go out there and 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 record particular events, uh, conduct interviews, things like that, to be this well-rounded uh, radio personality. That was something that I've always aspired to become. Um, the thing about it, though, is this. To, in this day and age, you don't have that, really. I mean, you have more than anything. You have disc jockeys who just shout into the microphone and just, yeah. you know, fiddle around with their with their with their with their toys, and, and they're yeah. and they're cool with that. They're cool with that. They don't they don't want to to go beyond that particular that particular realm. And yeah. I think the same can be said of of you know. And this is I, I don't mean to to be to to uh, generalize anything, but the vast majority of people who are in media, who do the news and stuff like that, who who read the news and write the news, they just want to get a paycheck. They just want to regurgitate what you know what a politician says or what some important quote unquote important person says, and that's it. You know, yeah. no, I don't ask any questions. Just buy the O and take it home tonight. End of story. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. If anybody knows <laughs> that reference, please comment on it. What was that reference? <laughs> Um, but yeah, coming back to technology, I mean, I discovered technology. early on at audition that it isn't much that you need to do to make this thing sound good. I mean, I'm not an expert and I'm still learning. And my sound, people have complained, Ian, you sound like you're in a tunnel. It's not my <laughs> fault. I don't have a mic. And why is Jared sound like he's in the toilet? It's not his fault. You know, because I am. Oh God! <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> right. so, joking, so joking. We, we we will work on it. Trust me. Send us money. We will. We will. We will send us money. Um, but but the the thing is, is that the technology has reached a stage now where push buttons give you the things that you want. So you you know, auto tune is is the epitome of that. You know, they have people who can't sing suddenly being able to sing because auto tune suddenly figured out how to make you sound good. You see? Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and somebody was saying, well, you know, you don't really need to be a photographer. The, the camera does it all, you know? And I'm like, are you insane? You can't just point and shoot, you know? But people are doing it. And that's, that's, yeah. that's the thing. But, um, I mean, now is all the gimmicks of Photoshop where people are Photoshopping dinosaurs into wedding photos. God only knows why. Um, that's because, this, because, the marriages will, because the marriages will eventually be extinct, but please, okay, go on. Wait, I want to say shout out to congratulations <laughs> to Candice 
and her husband. Congrats. Uh, I, I can't Hi, remember Candace. his name. Just, <laughs> Candace Innes? <laughs> Good Lord, Ian. I, 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 I drew a blank there. Congratulations on your wedding. Your wedding photos were awesome. You know, considering yes, the quite. Of what's going on right now, you see, having a wedding is bad. It's difficult, you know, um, because uh, my my brother celebrates his first anniversary. Mick, you're married. How yeah. how is married life? Happily, awesome, yeah. best, that's awesome, good, be best that's thing I've ever terrific. did in my life. <laughs> oh, that's great. That, I, I would definitely recommend it to to everybody else. So I, I, I I would disagree with that because I'm divorced. <laughs> so so no, I'm not I'm not married. So I'm 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 good. I'm good where yeah. I am. Thank you very much. Well, it it all depends on um on you, I guess. So I mean, like either yeah. way it works. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, Guys, this was great. Um, I I think we've pretty much talked a lot of stuff today. Um make how you feel. Was this was this as scary as you thought it would be? <laughs> uh I feel I feel it was good. I feel confident yeah. that um we did a, a semi okay job. I felt um we could have been a little more humorous at times, but <laughs> it was it was good. It was good. It was nice catching up with you and Jared. It's yeah, been it forever since um I yeah. spoke to you, yeah. um you guys. So yeah, it was it was overall it was I think, super I think fun. We wanna we wanna we've always said we are we are not one off people. We wanna bring yeah. people. um our episode ten for season one was awesome because people were yeah. very happy that we had lots of people on it. And I always mm -hmm. the challenge is always getting guests. So yeah. I wanna bring back. I don't want to just bring back people at random. I want to bring back people to talk about specific things. So uh, I was trying to get Alicia Cupid on, but if we could get Alicia on and then maybe Mick, you could come back. Alicia, yeah, that'd about, be super cool. More, talk more about production, you know, yeah. production of, of things and, 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 you know, getting things because that, that you, you, with, and even if we brought back in Timmy, because that's his thing too. I mean, you and Timmy could interface. I think Timmy's a yeah. great no I, um, I think for me like the, the structure the conversations we have like um you you guys are so talented in the advertising aspect of it but like for me the part that really interests me is the creative stuff so talking yeah. about blender talking about um unity or unreal or even um i or, asked, um, I those asked stuff would be super young cool guys yeah looking through the animation to come and talk and they're very gun shy yeah, they're very, very scared of talking. Because you know? right now, like, um, I use Blend on a daily basis, like, um, That's in production. Awesome. Uh, it would be super cool to to convey some of the the cool things I learned, just to yeah. transmit it and um, just have a conversation about it. It's a super fun tool, and um, right now in the industry, it is picking up pace. Like a lot of yeah. people are jumping on board. And that and Unreal, the Unreal yeah. Engine, God, things that are going on. Anyway, mm -hmm. so. People could follow you on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, what is the what's the handle? Actually, um, am I even on Instagram? To be honest, I can't remember. I mean, um, you people, used to be. Did you come yeah, off? Yeah. I don't know. Like it's been so long. I, I don't really have a social media presence. Um, more of like not social media inclined. So yeah. Um, just okay. just send good wishes <laughs> in the old fashioned way, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are on Instagram. But oh, you're, nice. not, you're not that active. But you have a no. website too, Mick. Oh, that I didn't. Um, oh no, that, yeah. that is, no, you. That's don't. down. Yeah. That's down. Like okay. to be honest, like I don't do those those things as much as I should. I know I should, but um, yeah, I'm one of the things that that. That's fine. Yeah. But what are, are you looking? Yeah. Are you looking for? Are you looking for more opportunities, or are you kind of good where you are? How how you feel about? you know, promoting yourself. I mean, is it that? Um, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty comfortable where I'm like, <laughs> I feel yeah. pretty secure. <laughs> so um, no what, promotion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. that's, that's, that's what really counts. Well, yeah. you, people could that's follow really us because yeah. we're, we're social media whores. Like, yes, we uh, are. Jared, oh, Jared, just to come back, Jared got, um, got a starry eyed fan on, 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 on his <laughs> Profile. Jaya doesn't have a mm. page. She has a profile. Nice. Uh, so you could you could go and follow him on um is Jared Ricardo B on Facebook. Jared Ricardo um, B on Facebook and on Twitter, Jared Butts One Word. Follow me and I will follow you back. That's a promise. 
And I, you can follow me on, I'm not really on Twitter because I think it's a disgusting platform, but uh, anyway, that's my opinion. Um, <laughs> we design yeah. on Twitter and Instagram. I'm yeah. on Instagram. I I love Instagram because there's, um, there's a lot of people who I interface with, uh, creative people, and we talk a lot and share things a lot. So Instagram. Yeah. Since since Tumblr went, when did they way of whatever it went? I came off Tumblr and I found Instagram was a kind of nice, you know, not not a replacement, but that's a whole story. And then on my on Facebook, uh, redesigns.pro, and of course my website redesigns.pro. Um, yes. We have a YouTube channel for this podcast, but that's not important right now. So you can Is follow. Us there. <laughs> yes, you can follow. Yes, you can follow us, and then and, yes. um, you know, just find a daddy. Right. It's so how we chase. end? How we end is we come up with a definition for the theme of today's show. Um, what is what is what 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 is, what is motion graphics, Jared? Good lord, you are asking me this question. Mick, should we ask Mick to define you it? You should ask Mick that question. Right, what, so what, Mick, is, yes. what is motion yeah, graphics? Mick, yes. What is motion graphics? Um, what is motion graphics? Study of movement. I don't know. Like um, <laughs> a study. It's a study of well, movement and how to apply it. Yeah. To uh, everyday living. In I, I terms say, of yeah, pretty much. Yeah. In terms of selling, in terms of selling a particular product. Well, but in case of that's, but that's yes, not it, important. That's right not now. important right now. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Thanks for coming. No, thanks, thanks guys. Have a good one. Yeah, you too, man. We'll, we'll talk some more. Good. Right. We will talk. Take care. All right, John. Cool. Thanks. Okay, guys. Bye. Bye.